carrying on with Victoria's story, she said, Some cultures are not receptive of a man and wife discussing end-of-life matters, like making wills, burial plans and distribution of assets. Chief beneficiaries like children are sometimes not as engaged as one would wish them to be, but always have comments about better ways of doing what has already been concluded. It can be difficult to understand why no one thinks you can cope or make a decision. As such, one may end up with several partners, in my case five children, all of whom now own me, especially the firstborn male. The ask here is how do we support principal carers for a patient who is dying to suddenly have to face the tremendous role change that will happen once their loved one dies? Should the care setting acknowledge different requirements due to cultural diversity and that end of life planning might be a taboo? And signpost Victoria and those like her to appropriate support groups within the community. Thank you for listening to Victoria's story. As a result of hearing Victoria's story and listening to the experiences of our other PPI members, we have decided that it is vital that we continue to follow the family after the patient has died to examine what family members need at this very difficult time. We have decided to invite all bereaved family carers in Workstream 4 to complete a questionnaire three months after their bereavement. This is so they can tell us about their experiences around the time of death, when support was provided and when it was not, and also whether any professional support they felt they needed was available. We would once again like to thank Victoria and Nyla, especially for sharing this story and helping us to develop our research further to improve patient and family care. Thank you.